Hello there, this is Carrie Rhodes. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's card making video, I am showing the Spellbinders Large Die of the Month for September 2020. This is the Have Your Cake die set. It is such a fun die set. I'm going to show it to you with the three different sentiments that you can use from this set. And also I'm going to show you an add-on stamp set that you can use with this die set, which is such a super cool thing that they have available this month. So these largest three dies are the three pieces you're going to need to create a slice of cake. These fallout pieces you may or may not want to use inside the cake with your sentiment dies. So there's three possible sentiments. You're going to want to use them with this outline piece to cut out a sentiment that will fit right in those openings on the face of the cake slice. There's, like I said, three different possibilities and I'm going to show you all three of them on this cake right here. So we're gonna first do the word happy, and also I'm going to use that die to cut darker pieces that will fit inside my cake. So you see there I have the word happy, and then I have one that's plain. So I used that die so I didn't um, run my whole piece of cake through a second time. I felt like it was wasting less paper. I could use a small scrap to get that solid dark pink piece by using just that outline die, but you also put it around the words. So the first word is happy and the second word is birthday. So I'm just using my um, little tool here to push out the fallout pieces in and around those letters because there are small pieces like around the A and the inside of the B, those pieces are quite small. So I'm just showing you here laying this out but in the end when I put this piece all together I actually put the words spaced apart so you'll see that at the end so next I wanted to create three different pieces of cake so I've decided to put these on a slimline card so here's my yellow piece of cake and I'm going to use the longest sentiment from this die set for this slice. So I'm gonna be cutting out six different pieces. So there's gonna be a word in each of those openings. And it says, you can have your cake and eat it too. Isn't that cute? Now for my orange slice, I am using the last of the three sentiments and it says, make a wish. So again, I'm just using those two dies together to cut them out. I will die cut, die cut some darker pieces to go in the open spaces as well. There's also dies in this set to make little fruits to go on top of your cake or around your cake. So I am going to have a strawberry for my pink cake. I'm going to have, there's also a cherry. I'm going to save the cherry and actually use that on my second project for today. There is a carrot for carrot cake. And then there's this um, citrus dye. So you can use it for your um, lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, you know, whatever. You can make it how you want it to be. So now I'm showing you how I put this together using a piece of packing tape. So this is just gonna help hold things together like a backing, but I am also going to be using my liquid glue so none of these things accidentally, you know, escape. So I am using all the fallout pieces from this to put back in using um, a lighter yellow and then all my words are going to be the darker yellow. So that's how it worked out for this particular cake, which is gonna be my lemon cake. And I think that it works really well for this dye to use two different shades of one color. So a dark yellow and a light yellow. And I did that with both of my cakes, pink and orange. So it, um, is just, I don't know, I like matchy matchy things. So it's very matchy matchy. <laughs> so now I have my words and what I did is I put the glue on the back of them and I let them set while I put a few other pieces together. So once this glue is mostly dry, 30 seconds or so, when I stick that down, the glue has set a little bit and then it doesn't squish out, so to speak. And that really helps when you have these intricate dies to not get glue everywhere and have those little shiny spots, little oozy pieces, little glue on your fingers and all those things. So there's my little tip for this. All right, so this piece right here is a like a frosting or whipped cream or whatever you want it to be for your, your cake and it just makes the edge of this cake, doesn't it? 
So I put one at the top and one at the bottom and then I'm gonna trim away the excess tape that I don't need. And I'm gonna repeat this again with the orange piece. I already did the pink one. It's the same thing. I just sped this up so you could see me do it a second time. And this one just has two sentiments. So I'm gonna put those right in the middle on this one make a wish is what this one says. So while those are drying, then I go ahead and attach my side and my top pieces and my whipped cream. And then those pieces are gonna be set up a little bit. And when I stick them down, I have a lot less of a glue mess. All right, so now for my card base, which is a nine inch by eight inch, eight, okay, yeah, it's a nine inch by eight inch piece of paper scored at four inches. That's my card base. And I used every square inch of this paper for this card. I am gonna use some silks to create a background on this card. So this is bubblegum silk. It's a um, splatter that is has shimmer in it. So once you first splatter this down, it is kind of dark, but once it dries back, you'll see that shimmer shine through and it's a little bit lighter. So I put a ton on because so much of it is going to be covered. So I'm okay with, you know, doing it in excess so that once most of this is covered up, there's still going to be some of that splatter showing through. So now I have sour lemon for my middle section and you can see I'm just using post-it notes to mask off those areas. So I have an orange section, a yellow section, and a pink section. This is citrus cooler that I'm using for the orange section. So again, just putting a ton on there so that I will have some showing once those cake slices are added to the card. So there it is, all splattered. It looks so fun, a little bit 80s, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> and then for the cakes to sit on, I die cut a strip of glitter cardstock. It's an inch wide, and I thought, oh, glitter, it's gonna be so fun. But in the end, it was really subtle. So I ended up doing a really light blue piece and stamping it with that add-on stamp set. I did not show it on camera, but I have a picture of it all finished. And I was able just to shimmy it underneath the cakes and that piece is actually only three-fourths of an inch wide so you if you look really close at the card you can see like a fourth of an inch of that glitter paper still showing behind those cakes now i am taking scraps of fun foam and building them up on the back of my cake to make it more sturdy and to pop them up off my card so i did that on each of the cake slices and then i will glue those down onto my card and the end pieces of cake, so the pink and the orange, are nearly flush with the edge of this card. And then here's the yellow. I tried to match up the fun foam so if it showed anywhere it was matchy matchy because you know, I already told you I like matchy matchy. <laughs> so now I'm gonna put my lemon together the same way I put the cake together with a little piece of tape behind it and also using my glue just for a really strong hold. So for the lemon, the outer pieces of the lemon I did with the dark yellow, the inner pieces with the light yellow. And I think it's so cute. I think that's this is my favorite piece because you can make so many different fruits with it. So then I just trim away that excess packing tape and it's ready to go on my card. So there is another die that cuts out whipped cream. So like, um, you know, a little swirl you'd put on top and it has, it cuts a slit in it. So you can tuck your little fruits into it. So cute. All right, for my strawberry, I put glue on the back, let it sit for uh, 30 seconds or so and stuck it down to this dark roast cardstock. It's a dark, dark, almost black brown cardstock. So there, I just tuck my strawberry right into the whipped cream. Isn't that adorable? And there's a die that cuts all the green things. So my strawberry has a topper. And then I will go ahead and use a foam square to stick that onto the cake to give it a little bit of a shadow and that dimension that I love on my cards. And then I was like, well, the lemon has to be popped up too. So I twisted that off and stuck it down with a foam square. Here is my carrot for my carrot cake, all tucked in the whipped cream. It's rather large, so I am going to have to trim off a little bit of its greenery. It's kind of sad, but you know, I had a lot of space to work with on this card, so I had to trim it off. It was not gonna fit in the envelope if I did not do that. This is Sparkle Silk, my favorite of all the silks, because it's just shimmer. 
So I'm gonna paint all the whipped cream pieces on this card. So the top and the bottom of the cake as well as the whipped cream with the fruit on the top. And it just gives it that added shimmer that I have going on in the background. Um, I like to tie things together like that. But can you tell like that glitter paper on the bottom is just a little bit too subtle for this card. It's not looking like anything the cakes should be sitting on. So I'll show you the a picture of it at in just a second with the blue piece that I added and I think it really helps keep them grounded. So now, this is like my favorite part of this card. I am putting glaze over the three pieces of fruit. So they're like, have you seen that at the bakery, the glazed fruit? I thought it just made these pieces of cake. Like if you could just go shop for a piece of cake, wouldn't that be perfect? You get the cake you want, I get the cake I want. Yeah, I think that's what this card is. Then I took some sparkle cut, so it's like chunky glitter, and sprinkled it onto my wet glaze, and it really did the trick. It was, it's amazing. So I'm gonna let that dry, and here you can see the blue I put across the bottom for that cake to sit on. And now we're going to make a shaker tag. I thought for the element that would create the shaker, I would use the fun foam, right? Like I did to stick my cakes to my card. So I die cut this, piece of the cake with fun foam. And then it was a little, um, it's really super thin on that right hand side. And it was just so wobbly. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna stick this down to a piece of cardstock to make it more sturdy. And that should work for my shaker card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we'll move on to other parts of this little shaker tag. But spoiler alert, it was not good. It did not work out, but I wanted to show it to you because I guess it's a way you could make a shaker card with this, but it was just too thin for the fun foam to provide enough support for a shaker. So you can see I'm removing all those inner pieces because I need, or I want it to be one big opening for the shaker part. So um, I'm going to set that aside. There on my right hand side or my left hand side of the screen, there's another piece of that cake die cut with glue already on it setting while I play with my tag, which is four and a fourth inches by three and a fourth inches. And I'm taking that um, sprinkle stamp and stamping a background for my cake piece with Beach Breeze ink. I didn't worry too much about the center because I am gonna put my cake there. And then I'm gonna take a blending brush and just dust the edges of this. And that's gonna help it match the blue on my card a little bit because wouldn't it be fun to have a card with a matching tag to put your gift all together? And then I'll splatter that piece with some of that sparkle silk. And again, so much of it's going to be covered up so I can really go to town and put a ton of this on there so that I know it's going to show with so much of it being covered. So we'll let that dry and I'm going to bring in a piece of window sheet. That piece of cake has sat there for a little bit so I can easily stick it down to my window sheet and no glue is going to seep out around the edges. Now here is a, another piece die cut of this cake slice front is what I'm calling it. I'm going to stick that down to my tag and that's going to be a guide for me to stick in all my uh, pieces that will are the opening of the cake. It's almost like the flavoring of the cake or the frosting inside the cake. And I decided I had to do rainbow. So that's what I'm gonna do. For the edges of the card, I had already die cut them from Fun Foam. So I decided to go ahead and use those. And in a minute is when I decide this, uh, fun the Fun Foam for the shaker element is not gonna work out. But I did go ahead and keep these other two pieces as um, elements for this card. So now we're going to move on to these cake slices and stamp them with the sentiments from the stamp set. So these are made to stamp right on these cake pieces. So here I'm going to stamp um, a shorter sentiment. It's only going to be four pieces. So it says for you and I'm going to stamp that multiple times to build up the ink and then emboss it with white embossing powder and I did make sure and use my anti-static powder tool quite heavily 
It's the only way I get success. So it says for you on this special day. There's also congrats in there. So it could say congrats on your special day. So you can mix up these sentiments and really have a lot of choices to put on your cake. All right, so I'm gonna trim off the extra window sheet and this is gonna be the front portion of my shaker tag. So it's going to have the lines on it. The base or my guide will have the lines on it, but the piece that goes in between them that creates the lift or the reservoir for my shaker will not have the lines. All right, so this is the moment when I decide this is not sturdy enough. So what I ended up doing is die cutting from some um, lightweight cardstock and creating a base for this. So I'll show you that in just a second. But I went ahead and stuck these in. This is actually where I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So <laughs> what should I do instead? And they look so cool and rainbow. I'm so glad there's six openings so you can get the purple in there too. Okay, so here I am with all my paper pieces, putting them together. Cut, so I'm cutting out the middle, putting the glue on, letting them set so that that glue can have a minute to dry and it doesn't squish out because if it did, then all my shaker bits would stick to it. And that's, you know, it's not as fun when your shaker elements don't shake. So letting, those, letting that glue set is another um, helpful thing for a shaker card if you end up having to die cut multiple pieces and stack them up like I'm doing here. I guess I didn't let that one dry. Well, sometimes I get impatient. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I did five layers of cardstock in between my base and my top. I'm gonna put the glue on, let that set while I add the side piece, which I realized I put my cake, initial cake piece right in the center of this tag, which is wasn't what was in my head. So now the side of my cake really hangs off. So I'm gonna deal with that in just a moment too. So I'm using that same sparkle cut glitter to fill my shaker tag. And now that the glue has set a little bit on that top piece, I can stick my window sheet piece down to it and it's not gonna seep out. So I'm gonna set a heavy block on that and when that's dry, I'm just gonna trim off the part of the cake that hangs off the tag and I think it's still fabulous. So for the frosting, I wanted to add the lighter pink at the top so it would go with that pink slice at the top and then I'll just trim off the excess on that too. And then at the bottom, I did a light purple to go with the purple slice at the bottom. So I don't, what do you think? Are the colored pieces the cake or the icing? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's the cake and the white part is the icing. You know, sometimes it takes me a minute, everybody. Yeah, thanks for your patience. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm using the cherry and I actually die cut the whipped cream from that same glittered paper so I could have the glitter paper play in on my tag, bringing back the sparkle silk and adding that to my pink and purple um, icing on the side. And then of course I'm going to glaze that cherry and add also the sparkle cuts like I did on the tag because I just, that's my favorite part of these. Like it just is that special something. The little, you know, love is in the details and that's what this is on these tags. So there's that sparkle cut glitter, just a tiny little pinch will do. And then I'm gonna add a lime on this one using two different colors of green cardstock and a strawberry behind that. So because my cake is offset, now I have room for these fun fruits at the bottom. So I will go ahead and add glaze to both of them and glitter to finish this off. I'm gonna let that dry and just put a long piece of twine through the hole that I punched in the top corner so that um, this could be added to a gift bag or present later. And you could also come back with um, like a piece of ribbon or something that really matched and that would be cute too. So those are today's projects using the Spellbinders Large Die of the Month set. Have your cake for the month of September. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Maybe your kit's on the way and now you have some idea of how to use it and maybe some inspiration. If not, I will have um, this kit from Spellbinders linked for you below. And then there, there is a ton of other 
kits of the month at Spellbinder, so you can check those out too. All right, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you watching, and I would love to hear from you on what you think of this die set. So leave a comment below, and if you haven't, you can uh, subscribe to my channel. I have new videos all the time, and I will see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.